So, you've seen all the hype about this product. I haven't actually tried it yet and this is the first unbox of this product. I've looked at the videos and there was some people saying a bad thing is about it, most of the people were appreciating about it. I've known about this product for quite a while already. Uh, we started using the UDH derailleur uh, immediately when it was uh, released 2019. I believe this product is compatible with our products ever since uh, that had the UDH, which is the Stamina 180 and 140 and uh, yeah, Wickele and Voima. So let's see what's in the box and what do I think about the new system. First, the stickers. Let's give those to kids and uh, let's see what's here. Bolts. Oh, okay, chain ring bolts. Uh, I bet somebody opened this already and the chain ring is somewhere, somewhere else. Okay, so here we go. First, manuals. Those are a new chain. So um, it seems to be bigger. Uh, let's open the box a little bit so I can see it. I haven't seen this yet. Can't say anything about it, uh, but uh, yeah, it goes only one way, apparently, because the other side is flat. And what I've learned about it, you can't use any other chains anymore with this, so you're stuck with this. New technology, new rules. This is quite big and chunky. Oh, it rotates. Hmm. Oh, it, you can, I took it apart again. Well, wow, this was, this was good. It's easy to take apart and, and um, apparently it's, uh, yeah, that's good because it gives a sensation that we can actually have spare parts <laughs> now, which, which everyone who had a derailleur has been waiting for ages. Actually, what I did with the AXS, uh, previous AXS, I, I just uh, always took uh, spare parts from the uh, manual ones because they cost way less than the AXS and I didn't break any of those servo motors on the AXS or the uh, batteries. So, so I just took the uh, bushings from uh, cheap, like the GX or whatever we had in, in stock. I just took one of those and cage, I just replaced the cage and uh, the cage was usually the, that got bent. So now we have really big and sturdy cage. Let, let me see if I can get it back on. So what? Um, few moments later. Okay. Is it really that easy? Yes, it is. Huh. So you don't, you don't, you don't need to be mechanic to get change parts. So I think that's good. Well, this seems to be the version that ha doesn't have the magic wheel, apparently. Yeah, nope, doesn't have it. Yeah, this looks good. Uh, now they have removed those pins. There was this C locks over here. Now it looks like there's some Allen key. Well, the one is with a, with a kind of secured Allen key. So that is something that you shouldn't take off, maybe. So what is the part you can change, really? Well, we can figure out one out later. But at least it looks like you can take this piece off and then it comes off the other way. But yeah, that, this was the one that, these were the ones that was uh, the weak link on the AXS. It kind of did it itself. Like I, had, I was so frustrated. I couldn't go even uh, the GX especially, but the XO1s were more, more uh, durable. Okay, so then we go to the, uh, the battery seems to be the sa same as it used to be. Let's go a little bit deeper to the box. Oh, there's a chain ring. Oh, this is for the e-bike. So we can change the chain ring. Oh, you, that, let's dive into that later. So here's the battery. So this is really cool that they kept the same battery. So we have these already. So it's a good one and this is straightforward. And on the GX, AXS, the previous one, there was this cage on top of it, which was unnecessary. Probably somebody just was complaining that they were afraid to lose one, but I never lost any of these batteries. I have one battery that, uh, this little thing here, it got uh, 
maybe fatigued and it got broken, but that was uh, when I was, I just took it off the charger and it was damaged, so I couldn't use it. There's only one battery that uh, was faulty once and I've been using this since uh, 2019, was it? When they got released, I'm, I'm not sure. Similar buttons. Uh -huh. Yeah, it works with the double click, it goes like a uh, inside and one click outside. So if you lose the uh, controller. Okay, um, well, it, it's big for sure. And, and this is something that, uh, that I saw uh, online. Somebody was criticizing like mad on this one. And, and, and I don't understand why, because um, immediately when he was saying that this is like a pinching, uh, a pinching uh, connection, I was thinking that can't be like this. Like it would be, it would be not wise to make it uh, pinching. I actually, con contacted uh, Rob. Rob writes EMTB, and I he, I knew that he had one, and um, I, I asked him to check if it's a floating design or. Uh, pinching. So I asked him to do this. So if it's floating, this should go the wrong way in and and um, seems to go wrong way in. So so basically this doesn't, uh, uh, there's no surfaces where this presses this inside. So this is just floating. And it, what, what it means that when it floats is that it's, it's a tra traditional. So the, the hub really mounts here, and this is the zero point for the whole system. And, and this side, when, when, when you put this in, it works as a support. The biggest problem with derailers, the, the bigger AXS derailleur was that when, when you hit bumps, it kind of wants to twist that side, side because you have the swinging mass, and same time you're kicking in gears and something like that, so it kind of bend the, some of the derailleurs and, and uh, the cages were like bending and uh, the, these small pins were, were undoing themselves. So they have addressed quite a few, um, quite a few things to improve this. And uh, I think these are, well, very, very welcome. I'm not sure about one thing though, that did they, um, is this making it better? Or uh, because UDH has this one thing that I, I uh, don't like. Uh, let's put this here so so you can see. It. So when you uh, right the corner and there's lateral flex, which means that the other side of the swing arm wants to go that way, and other one this way. This is the lateral flex. So this can actually turn with the axle like this, and then it kind of undoes itself. Uh, it's not a major issue, and that's why we didn't do anything really about it, but, but it's something that could be engineered a little bit better. Uh, but let's see how, how, how this is in, with the new, new design. So, so there's, there's a serrated plate. I, don't, I didn't really read the manual, I'm just guessing. Let's see if I do it right. Uh, but it, uh, of course, I've seen the 3D models and everything. So there's a serrated plate, and it looks like it fits very good with the uh, with the shape here, which which there's a standard how to make it. So there's all the clearance models and everything. Uh, so looks like it fits nicely there. Then we have this, and I guess I have to put this in between here. Uh, Maybe, looks like it fits. I can immediately, immediately see that there's a, there's, it is a floating design, so there's no um, problem with this. So let's, let's use the, so this one looks like it threads the right way. Okay. What's the Newtons on it? 35, wow, wow, that's quite a lot. 31, five newtons is quite, quite a lot. I'm not gonna thread it in 
massively in. So, okay, so now I can move like this. But now it uses only the bushing and not, not the frame. So it's not rubbing the frame, nothing is moving. And yeah, I think the serrated surface will bite into this aluminum very good when you put 35. Should we do it? I got the torque wrench. Let's put it to 35 Newton meters. Wow, that's quite a bit. I feel uneasy about this. Is it really that much? Thirty-five newton meters. Massive. Okay. <laughs> I don't have the guts to do it because it's. It is. Like. Oh yeah, there was it. <laughs> it was close. But it still moves nicely. So I bet. Uh, okay. So now that you have the thirty-five newton, I don't think this is going to rotate. The, I think that they address the. Axle, axle issue by doing this. I think that's that's not gonna rotate. So this is uh, how how it is on our frame and uh, looks pretty good. What do you think? It fits the frame nicely. The I mean the raw clear is is it's good looking, isn't it? Now I understand why it's so close to the, why the clearances are very important because there's, is there any B-screws? No, there's no B-screw. So it's pretty close to the frame. I mean, of course it's not like that. It's gonna have the, but if something goes wrong, let's go. It's very close to the frame. And this, this uh, piece is, has been used, uh, designed with the, the, uh, the clearance model from SRAM. But yeah, I don't know what, what that is, but probably safety feature. So I'm not gonna stand on it because most of the people just did it, so I, I think it's overdone. But I, I like the thing that it's very slim, so there's not going to be so many hits on it, and now it's on the low, low. Uh, I mean, on the how do you say it? High gear or low gear? Whatever. Smallest gear, smallest cog, um, and uh, it's not sticking out that much. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, look at the other stuff that we have. What do we have here? So the, oh, there's another. What's, the, <laughs> what is this? Bash card. Bash Is it? Looks like a dog ring. I guess this is for e-bike stuff like e-bike there's so many people getting on e-bikes and and, my, and they might be worried about their trousers i mean is it do you think this is it yeah oh yeah it fits so this is a dad feature is it like a i don't i don't know i'm not making fun of it, anyone but i mean this looks like very dad yeah But you can't put the chain uh, guide anymore. But this is a, like a, I think it's like, would you use it? Ooh, <clears throat> that's big. Again, fits nice to the frame. Looks good. Um, but this, this looks really nice actually. It looks good on photos and on trail for sure. Somebody's into color matching. This, this is good, good match. 
Well, I mean, this looks, uh, looks uh, um, yeah, this is the uh, 52 tooth option. What is there, something plastic inside? Some plastic ring inside there. Maybe it helps with the, so there's no dirt in it, or I don't know. It would be nice to know why is it there, though, because I, I don't know if there's any in any of the, or is it just to make it look red, SRAM red? Aesthetics or, or real deal? I don't know. Could be so you don't get, like, I don't know, grass or something like that inside there. So easy, I don't know. Color coding. But this is interesting. Okay, so so finally we get a shifter that does it, doesn't want to imitate the old shifter, which you have those. You need to have levers to actually pull the gear cable. So this is actually a button. Oh, there's quite a. It is quite a much force to pu push this. That's quite stiff. Okay, then my first first uh, thought is that is this gonna we're gonna have this because you press this and it's gonna go like that. But yeah, I probably have thought of it. But now you can actually change the angle of this, and that is good because uh, people have different size of fingers. And you can mount it on the right side and left side. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's a feature. You can put it on this side. So who would do that? Or you could put it up like this so you could <laughs> like next gear yeah if they would be this would be designed uh 10 years ago you would have massive screen which says one mm -hmm. two <laughs> three something like that so you could go always oh what gear am i on one <laughs> well, what are these then is there something? Oh, there's some goodie bag. Like, I'm just playing dumb. Like, I, I haven't really tried it yet. So, I, I mean, there's snow outside, and have I not had any time whatsoever to focus on this one. So you have different buttons. Oh, there's some kind of adhesive underneath. So when you make your choice, it's kind of more permanent, maybe. But there's uh, these uh, clips. Do they come off? Yeah. So you can go with uh, maybe different shape if you go up and down. So the down would be shape different. The other one is more like uh, has a kind of sh smaller surface on it. This one has a bigger surface. Again, this nice fits the style. I think this is the color to go, go to, like everything matches nicely. The red is something that is not anywhere else though. But yeah, that's under the is there anything else, like charging? Yeah, this is the basic stuff. You have the charging and, and uh, yeah, the, the most baffling thing is really <laughs> this. Like, <laughs> but I, I guess it's like uh, e-bikes are, like this is probably set for e-bikes because you have the ring separately. But anyway, I think that uh, this is made for recreational use. I would say that the people who uh, are going on e-bikes and are more, <clears throat> they're not so heavy hitting downhill uh, types and they, they want to secure their trousers. Yeah, so, or I don't know, like it's, I think this is, sometimes there's products that are just made for, to make people safer about something which is like, I mean, because they probably get on bikes after a while and they used to have all these guards for the chain and all that kind of stuff. And 
They they want the mud fenders, the fenders to be really big and and they don't want to deal with that mud and grime and all that kind of stuff. And I think that this kind of widens the user uh, user portfolio a bit. But yeah, um, this is probably most people will just use as a frisbee or I don't know. Can we figure out any use for this uh, other than frisbee? It would be always good to actually design a product. If somebody's not using it as it should be, it has a second usage. So, so I don't know, plant a tree in the middle or something like that. I don't know. Give me ideas in the comments. That's what you need to say always on YouTube, isn't it? Okay. So this is the uh, more integrated uh, with uh, suitable for, for Bosch, so you can mount this. And yeah, you just direct mount it. Looks good, again, color coding. Looks nice with the raw clear. Yeah, you could get a matching, matching color scene, scene on, with those. Um, I guess the next phase is to mount it, but I, I generally like the new design aesthetics and uh, yeah, this is really a no-brainer. I've been waiting for this kind of mounting for ages. There, there's some companies have made a, like a, this kind of support earlier that would kind of be an external and then uh, mount into the uh, Allen key port. I was thinking about similar for us as well, but since I noticed that SRAM will be coming out with this, I didn't bother to do much about it, but it took a while. Maybe the <laughs> COVID and the war in the middle made it a little bit harder to come out with the stuff. But, but overall, I like the new stuff. This is, <clears throat> I need to try it on the handlebar first because it feels quite big, but I think this is important. You feel the, that you're actually pushing something. You get the feedback because uh, while racing with the AXS, uh, current AXS is like, you go and pedal and then you, you want to change it a little bit, then it goes da -da 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 when you have something like vibrating. You press it and then you get three uh, gears instead of one or two that you wanted. And uh, yeah, oh, one, one thing I think I need to just connect this. There was, uh, I wanted to try the, so where's the AXS button now? Do we have it somewhere? Where is it? There's the light. Oh, there's the button is inside. Okay, it's covered here. So let's connect these two. So how to connect is simple. You just press this and wait that it starts blinking like that. So now it blinks. So then you press this uh, until it gives you a, like a blinker. Boop, boop. And then you press again this, and now it's connected. So this is how you connect all of them. So if you have the seat post and everything, you leave this blinking. So this is the master then. So I don't know if you can have it master any, any of this as a master, but let's say this is the master. And then you connect, if you have the flight at the end, you do the same kind of beeping on everything. And then after you've done this uh, buttons, then you press one here, and then this is the master. And then when you go to your uh, mobile phone, then you see all of them in, in there. But yeah, let's see how it shifts. So, so if you press it all the way, nothing happens constantly. Oh, it starts to get slower if I, even though I... Okay, but you can go that, yeah, that's, that's important. When you start from the gate, you immediately like go two gears Front. And it should be possible to go with full power with this one. I'm gonna go racing soon, so maybe I try it. Let's see. So, uh, but if you go like click, 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 now it stops. It doesn't go that. That's good because now you can't. Maybe, maybe that's the. F they have timed it so now it's you can still go full power and and it does make sense. But now you can. Couple of you can go and then that's three. Like three. Let's go again back. Fourth is slower. There's an algorithm, really, that does it. Yeah. 
I think it's the way to go forward. Quite expensive though. So there's, well, what's expensive? I mean, you get more tech. I, I'd rather pay for better tech. And also, this is what I, I like about it. You can get spare parts. That is something that uh, I really appreciate if, if, if you can repair something. You don't need to always buy a new one because the AXS uh, previous was that you just break the cage and then, then what? So my, my response was that to get the cheaper one, the manual one, and then get the cage of that and put it on the AXS. So the body is there still and you don't need it. So you so hardly never uh, need that body part. But the pins were the ones and now you can probably change this. So the question is, will we get the spare parts? Are they available or is it like, will they be like people buy it once and then they repair until the servo motor dies? We have to just see it. But overall, <clears throat> I like it. I like it quite a lot. Do we need to go through anything else about it? Oh, the cranks. Yeah, there are plastic cranks, so. I would like to see more metal cranks available, which are high-end. They just go directly to the carbon fiber, and I mean, well, whoever likes it, fine, but, but when, whenever I start using this, I feel bad because they get destroyed in, in so little time. So my cranks, I've only raced once in Transmitter and then had one week in, not even one week, half a week in Malaga, and I have them, like, the carbon layup is like this, rocks and everything hit them. They're light, for sure, but I mean, yeah, so I, I don't know, they're just crank cranks, but these go to e-bike, e so if you want to really uh, save weight, these are light cranks, well, but on e-bike, does it really matter that much? But yeah, color matching, these are uh, shiny, Nothing here is shiny. So, um, I don't know. XX EMTV. They're cranks. Uh, oh, they're shorter. That's the good one. So, they, how short are these? Do we? 165. Okay, so this is good. E bikes. I think it's good to get shorter cranks on e bikes because you don't need to have that much leverage on when, when you ride them. And I, I ride with 155. It's a little bit hard to go back to 170s after 155, but yeah, I got used to it. So, but one thing, when you have shorter cranks, you need to put, put your seat a little bit higher because when you're on the down, but, but uh, down part, so you, if it's, you go from 170 to 165, you need to five millimeter, put the seat five millimeter higher. But on e-bike, uh, I, specifically go with lower seat height anyway. So, so that, is, that is not the case with the shorter cranks. But yeah, they are the complete set of uh, the new, what is it called? SRAM. SRAM, but there's T-type, T-type. T-type. Where does the T go, come from? Transmission. Transmission type. T. Yeah. Well, it's up to, like, really, I need to just mount this on my bike, but... Ah, summer, come on. We need summer. <laughs> Whoa, they're pretty good, actually. 